I wonder if I could ask someone to put a verse of scripture up on the screen. Is that possible? They can try. It's Mark chapter 6, verse 56 through the end of the chapter. Mark chapter 6, New King James Version. Uh, and if they can, they can. If they can't, I'm just going to have to tell you what it says. It says that when he stepped out of the boat, the people recognized him. Do you know what happened to this church at approximately 8 o'clock tonight at 8 p.m.? I was watching you 43 minutes ago. You were reintroduced to who Christ is. It wasn't that you didn't know him, didn't love him, didn't experience him. But you had a new dimension of the knowledge of Christ. Now, Christianity, Matthew 18, verse 19 and 20. If any two of you shall agree is touching anything, it will be done because wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. We are the only movement in the history of the world where the founder attends every meeting. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you something shocking. And you may disagree with me. And of course you have that privilege. You'd be wrong, but you have the privilege. <laughs> the degree of excitement that you displayed for God in the last several minutes was so great that it was almost as if Christ had walked in the room. That's the way you were acting. You were, you were lost in God. Now we're ready. Now we're ready. We're ready for something big in this church. We're ready. I'm going to tell you something and I want you to listen. I'm going to be very careful not to take too long. They tried to go to Mysia, Acts 16 said, and God said no. They tried to go to Bithynia and God said no. They tried to go to Asia and God said no. Then the Spirit of the Lord revealed a vision to Paul of a man from Macedonia saying, come over and help us. And they knew it was God. The Holy Spirit revealed to me something. He said, I never will give guidance to anyone who is standing still. Only to those who are already in motion. And here's exactly what God said. They tried to go. They tried to go. God only blesses people that are trying to do something. I rebuked a large group of pastors recently. I said, the Holy Spirit is grieved because you said you wanted revival. And in your pursuit of revival, you stopped winning souls. And Jesus said, this you ought to have done without leaving this undone. You're always supposed to be trying to do something. Now, why does God... Think of this, a man who is hit against a brick wall, slammed into a locked door. What is he going to be like when the door opens? If he's willing to slam into a brick wall, how is he going to act when the door opens? He's going to run through it with all of his might. That's what God has just done. You see, you've been attacked. You've been lied about. You've been criticized. You've been slandered. You've been protested. Even some that call themselves Christian and fellow leaders have come against this church and spoken ill of it for its choices. But all of that is your Mysia. That it's your Bithynia. It, it's your Arabia. It's your Asia. Because now, tonight, at 8 p.m., the door opened. No, I'm going to try it again. See, I worked on that. I worked to be dramatic. Tonight at 8 p.m., the door for this church opened. Now, the people in your family that have resisted God, you're going to find that they're open. The school teacher who has oppressed your child is going to be open. The favor that is coming to this church starting now. In every area where it's had disfavor, 
it's suddenly going to have favor. Even in the media. Now, the schools are going to open. The businesses are going to prosper. The families are going to be blessed. And so what God is saying is this. You're at a moment, destiny, now where the anointing has come. The prophet said to the widow whose sons were about to be taken into slavery, how do you pay off that debt? He said, go and get vessels, not a few. Get every container you can. I don't care if it's a clay pot or a rusty coffee can. Get them all. And whatever ones you go and get, they're going to be filled with oil. And it's going to pay off your debt. Here's how God is saying that to destiny. Two more nights that I'm aware of. Two more nights. And then suddenly you're going to find that if you bring them to the meetings, they're going to be healed and saved. They're going to be transformed. The excitement is here. And here's what we've done in the past. We wasted the excitement. Sometimes I believe the most important thing you can do in a meeting is dismiss it. While the people are still out of their minds with excitement and joy. Get them out of the building. Because they're going to do that at Denny's. They're going to go, ah! We, I need to unleash you on the world. Now, I'm telling you, the sadness is over. The fear is over. The oppression is over. This is now an open heaven over this church. It's a total open heaven over this church. It's here. It's not coming. It's here. I saw it. I saw it. So right before I dismiss you, I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to compliment you on something. We did not mention anything about our flash drive or our book last night materials that we have available in the back i didn't say a word and a bunch of you bought bought them and i'm thinking i've got i'm worried that if i say something you won't <laughs> so i'm not going to give a sales pitch because last night without it you all were amazing thank you for that now the second thing i'm going to do is ask you all to close your eyes Because I'm going to tell you the most terrible thing that could ever happen. The most terrible thing that could ever happen. Is for you to have seen with your own eyes the miracles of Christ. To have seen the power of God. And not allow Christ to transform you. And make you a new creation. I can't imagine anything worse. Talk about ingratitude. Talk about burning the candle of your life for the devil and then blowing the smoke at God's face. That's what Billy Sunday described it as. You cannot leave tonight without forgiveness and peace with God. You can't leave this building. Even if only one person responds to me, I cannot let you go. Mara, what do I need? Christianity was never meant to be a belief system alone. That's how the Pharisees were stunned by Christ and the people were stunned. That was the difference. That was the uniqueness of Jesus. They said he spoke as one who had power. If your belief system has not given you power over depression, then you are enslaved. If your belief system has not corralled and neutralized your hate, you're in bondage. If you are addicted to a chemical or a habit or images of any kind, then you are bound and that bondage hurts. Even though I tell you that the people who were healed tonight are remarkable stories of joy. Their illness is not anywhere as severe as the one that is working its way through your soul right now. 
separation from God, anxiety, fear, anger, depression. All of the spirits that this nation has tried to put on us. God wants to remove it from you. He wants to lift it from you. He wants to give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. He wants you to know that there's a plan for your life. So who needs to raise their hand? Mar, I don't know what is going to happen to me in the future. I don't know how to deal with the feelings that constantly hammer against my skull at night right before I go to sleep. I need a miracle. I need peace of mind. I need to have my past forgiven. I feel so much torment. I just want a new life. So let me pray for you. Let me, where you're standing, pray for you. To say a prayer to end your nightmare. To turn your story from a tragedy into a victory. To give you options for joy and peace and happiness that you never imagined. Am I promising you a painless life? No. No disciple of Christ can have that. The Bible says we'll be hated. The Bible says we'll be persecuted. But the Bible says that it will have the opposite effect on us that it has on anyone else. We'll feel an honor and a joy and a privilege. And when you think of the emptiness and the meaninglessness of life without God, those are hardly issues for a child that has experienced Christ. The hate and the persecution just doesn't seem to matter. The only thing that matters is I've got to keep this presence of God and this joy and peace in me. Now I'm going to pray for you if you want to be set free. If you want a new life, I'm going to pray for you right now. But I need you to let me know Mario, I want that life you just described. I want that peace you just said. Put your hand in the air if that's what you want. And I'm ready to surrender to Christ to receive it. Get out of your seat if your hand is in the air and come to God. And I'm looking for a pastor right here. Excellent. Come. If your hand is raised, come to the front right now. Get out of your seat. Come and let me pray for you, like I promised. And here they come. Come, fill the front. Come, come and fill right here. Fill right over there. Workers, help them. Help them to get to the front. Here it is, almost nine o'clock. We've had a full complement of worship, preaching, healing, and miracles. And yet the hunger for to know Christ is so great in this room that here they are. I can't even tell you what's going to happen tomorrow night. All I know is that tonight we devastated the powers of darkness. Something happened. Something happened. All of you that have come to the front, please look at me for a moment. If I had one gift in the whole world, there's one gift that I wish I could have. is to take the peace and joy that I feel and touch you on your chest for you to feel it. Because you would know why you give up everything for Christ. You would know instantly. The Bible talked about being born again is like a man who saw a worthless piece of land, dirt. He just happened to be wandering through this real estate. And all of a sudden he looked and he dug down under something and there was a treasure chest filled with incredible wealth. And he buried it. And then went and paid for that land, whatever it cost. That's what Jesus said. That Christianity is the treasure hidden in the field. Your moment.
to live the life you were born to live starts right now. Peace, power, freedom. There is no cleansing agent known to man like the blood of Christ. It will wipe away all your past and you will stand before God pure and innocent because of Christ. Put your hand over your heart. Say this with me right now. I am ready. When you died on the cross and everybody just everybody in the house repeat this after me. When you died on the cross you proved that you loved me. When you rose again you proved you had the power to change me to save me and to keep me through everything. I'm yours now. I give you my soul, body and mind. I do it freely with no hesitation. You are now my reason for living. And I ask you to have mercy on me and give me your Holy Spirit and make me a new creation with new appetites, with new goals, and a new life. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done for me. In your mighty name.